Nice one, Deno. Just fuck it completely. What the fuck are you doing, idiot? Strength Snacko. Fucking wings, eh? going to try painting these wings. Yeah, happy party Monday, friends. Um, welcome to tonight's stream, the last stream for Hyperborea. As we all get enthusiastic about moving on to another project. When I say we, Specifically, meaning I. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll touch on that a little bit, mate. But yeah, we uh, we had some some pretty significant water ingress, um, and things are not perfect. But uh, I am safe and well. Vidzi and Hugo are safe and well. And these are the uh, these are the things that really matter. So, and if you're if you're not across what we're talking about, uh, Brisbane, the wonderful town in which I live, uh, has been subject to some crazy rainfall in the last uh, probably three to four days, and um, yeah, we've seen some. Uh, some pretty bad floods. So it's not fun. Alright, we'll move into yeah, maybe we will move into this blue green. G'day Pascal! Uh great question. Here's an answer I prepared. It's called Panzer Putty. Great product, uh, really weird consistency. Life's good, mate. Yes, uh, pretty good indeed. Certainly better than some. I am wearing a tie. Yes, it's uh, it's party Monday today, so we we celebrate on a Monday. It's a beautiful day. I think we all need to appreciate Mondays a bit more. It's the start of a new week, a week full of opportunity, possibility, you know. Let's, let's celebrate that fact. Celebrate good times, come on. Maverick. Uh, my friend, I don't do a lot of gaming, no. Um, the extent of my gaming tends to be uh, board games, board game ports. So I'm pretty pretty boring when it comes to board, uh, computer games from that perspective.
I sort of wish I was more interested in, in computer games, honestly. You know, a lot of my mates love them. They rave about, you know, XYZ game that's just come out and, you know, this sort of stuff. But yeah, I just... If it's a, if it's a choice for me between playing a computer game or painting some toy soldiers, I usually just sit down and paint. You know? Yep, lots of people on the hype train. Let's try us. We got a silver grey. I think I saw silver grey. No, you're off white. Oh, maybe light earth might do. Let's get rid of most of that. Did you? Yes, yeah, so I just started season four actually, and my girlfriend's given me the go ahead to move into watching it by myself. Not because she didn't enjoy the last season, she did, but I just am obsessed. I'm an obsessive freak and she's not. So she's like, oh, do you want to watch something else? And I was like, no, I would like to watch The Expanse for the next eight hours, please. And she's just knocked down for that. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I've been given the approval, the green light to go ahead and watch it by myself, which I'm very, very excited about. Maverick, I can tell you that I believe The Expanse is the best television show I've watched in the last few years. It is absolutely glorious. Absolutely glorious. That's enough airbrushing. <clears throat> well, for someone who's not read the books, I am enjoying <clears throat> not knowing what's coming. Yeah, this is the last, this is the last diorama model that we have, the very last one. Uh, before we finish up and we start something a little bit more exciting than seeing the same thing over and over. I'm sure it must get a bit boring. No, we shan't be doing a Crusader. <laughs> Alright. <clears throat> hmm. Yeah, we might go into Pascal Yellow. Pascal Yellow. I meant to say Pastel, but I've got Pascal on the brain. What a legend. because you paint with too many pastel colours. I doubt many people would call me pastel. Ah, uh, thank you, Match Fixer. That's glorious of you, mate. wonder if I need this. This stuff is annoying me. Maybe I'll take it off. Yeah, I think we'll take it off. Uh, you'll get to see what the actual model looks like, man. <laughs> Rather than this big old blob.
Thanks, JC. <clears throat> see what we're working with. <laughs> so I, I probably would say painting wings is up there with my least favourite activities that you could possibly imagine. Um, <laughs> they're fine. <laughs> but <clears throat> I, <clears throat> I'd really choose to paint wings voluntarily, but it is what it is. Um, my general tips are focus on uh, the, the highlights, um, you know, where, where you'd expect to see light on the wings, you know, on the upper areas, so we're, not, we're probably not going to do too much uh, the undersides. Uh, direction of your brush stroke, very important. Um, and then, yeah, the, the the two tools I really use a lot is the same two tools I use a lot for pretty much every painting I do, which is airbrush and contrast paints. I use them in slightly different way on this um, this sort of surface, though, which is um, which is to say, I actually do use the contrast paints as uh, contrast paints like the way they're intended sort of as a wash type of thing and the airbrush we just used to blend all of my bad highlighting together Ah, Akadiala, thank you. I am not set up at the moment with my shout outs, but everyone should go and follow Akadiliala. What a legend. Thanks for the raid, champion. Tell you what, I reckon I'm I'm literally gonna cheat so hard and not really even do these other wings. <laughs> Don't tell anyone. G'day. Welcome. How did your stream go? What did you do? <clears throat> awesome. Well, uh, this model is for a project that I'm working on right now, which looks like this. Just finding the thing. Boom. There you go. That's my project that I'm working on. You can see the beautiful Valkyrie right at the top. Let's pretend she's 
not uh, not not finished in this photo. Jared. <laughs> uh, these models are from a company called, uh, there's actually two companies, Aradia and Chimera. They recently did a Kickstarter um, for the figures called Ultima Thule. So if you uh, I want to see the figures a little bit more detail, just Google Ultima Thule and you'll find the uh, you'll find the Kickstarter. Yes, Topulus, well, look mate, here's the deal. I started this last month. I took a photo of it at the start of the entry period. I thought, look, why not? The, the category was paint something that's like how you paint or whatever. I was like, well, this is how I paint, motherfuckers. It's <laughs> what I do. It's not my fault they didn't they didn't put any more specific restrictions on their categories, did they? Uh, Natalie XOH, I have been painting this type of figure for about um, about six or seven years, uh, but I've been painting little toy soldiers for quite a long time. Um, started when I was in in school. Happy Party Monday, Scott of Alaska, great man. Bucks, you available tonight to join the stream, mate? Oh, good. All right, just give me the old shout out when you're ready to roll. Cool. Sounds good. So you probably got the old uh, the old scalpy out and uh, just getting back into Brickland. The brick heavy portfolio is paying off for the hungry investor. G'day plank. Amelia, welcome, welcome to the scene, you're a champion. Uh, I would highly recommend the Oz Painters Facebook group. Uh, that is pretty much the only place I post stuff for upcoming events, upcoming classes and what have you. 
um, seems to be the central location. Uh, there is a couple of Discord channels. Um, there's one called uh, Oceana Display Painters or something like that, um, which I'm sure someone in the stream who is a member will be able to get you an invite or give you a link or something. I don't really know how Discord works. G'day, Rowie, what's going on? Hope you're alright, mate, in the, uh, in the waters. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much um, that's pretty much the only areas I go, and to, to give myself a sub um, uh, plug, like a pretty uh, ordinary plug. Most of the stuff that happens in the Australian scene, uh, I have a pretty good handle on, and usually post about on my on my socials. So um, yeah, go follow me on Instagram or Twitter or something. Probably not Twitter because I tend to post a lot of drivel on there about my board games and my fucking Wordle exploits. Nah, it's a lie, I don't post about Wordle. One of my mates does that and I absolutely towelled him up the other day. Because he posted on there, oh yeah, I don't really post about Wordle much, but look at this, I got it in one and I screenshotted about two weeks before where he was posting every day. Fucking hell. Wordle. Uh, yeah, look, mate. For for me, it's probably it feels like it is worse than those floods. Um, just quietly, that's sort of uh, my perspective. Everyone's reality is obviously a bit different, but um, yeah, for me, it's it's uh, it's worse for sure. So. Just a bit of the old cheeky dry brushing friends. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is, um, in some places it's worse. Like where, where I am, we didn't have any water at all last time. And uh, literally came, came up the street outside the front of the shopping centre that I live just across the road from. It's fucking crazy. I, I do indeed have power, yes, I'm fortunate at the moment. I haven't lost power, and hopefully won't, but yeah, we just don't know what's going to happen. This is a cheating, cheating method for the old wings. All right, great. Now we'll move back to the airbrush, do a little bit of the old contrast paints. I'm going to try and move some browns into this. Let's actually use that wild wood. Yeah, exactly, mate. The the rains... Like, I, I, I can't ever remember it in my lifetime raining as long as it did. See you, Maverick. Yeah, it was, it was bedlam. Yeah, cannot remember it being that bad at all. Alright, make sure all that's dried. So a little known fact, haha, <laughs> g'day Serenity. Uh, you can actually use contrast paints through an airbrush in the same way that you would not use them normally, right? As you can see, what I'm doing here is just pumping them a little bit heavier and you're getting that same effect that you would from a contrast paint if you did it by brush. It takes you half the time. <laughs> ah, Rowie. Yeah, pretty, pretty crazy times out there, friends, for a lot of reasons. You know, everything that's happening in the Ukraine, the flooding in Brisbane. Just 
still got COVID. So I'd like to come back to the patented Trent, method, Trent Dennison method of advice, which is uh, just don't be a fuckwit to other people, all right? We don't know what everyone's going through. Let's just, let's just not be fuckwits. All right, let's look out for each other. No, no, you don't need a fancy, you don't need a fancy airbrush. Um, you really don't need a fancy airbrush for anything. It just makes things a bit easier um, if you're inexperienced as all. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the contrast paints through an airbrush, it's just a, it's like an ink, it's like a really dilute paint, so it actually flows like a drain through the airbrush. Um, you tend to have less issues with like clogging up and that sort of stuff. All right, Rowie, see you, mate. Look after yourself. Well, this has been a fun project, friends. I think we'll uh, we'll do a bit of a debrief. Uh, yep, absolutely. Yep. So if you if you push harder, put more on, um, even if the application is quite thin, you will get it running down. So we're just gonna just gonna move into some highlights, I guess, on these wings, and then maybe we'll add some little dots and stuff. Uh, yeah, the model's awesome. This is my favourite model from the uh, from the whole range. So I saved it till last. <laughs> Perfect, yeah. My nana gave me that advice when I was a little tucker. She's always like, save your favourite bit till the end. Get all the rubbish stuff out of the way first. Good advice from my nana. G'day Dave. What's happening, mate? So yes, we are uh, probably probably half a day away from finishing the project. We've got uh, some resin to pour, and that's about it, really. This model. And then I may just do a little final pass. Hey, one thing I was thinking about, right? So this this may be one for everyone to uh, to mull over. Uh, lava should it be glossy with a with a resin effect? I've just got a little a little pool up the back that I'm gonna fill in. Thanks, her Stubline. I'll do a I'll do a. Um, Show it later on.
Uh, so the next project, uh, I think we're going to do Curse City. It should be fun. Not the actual Curse City, the uh, the extra models. But I do want to finish off the um, the Gauls. I was waiting for their arm to arrive. It didn't arrive. I'm fucking sick of waiting, so I'm going to fucking start sculpting it. Yeah, I, I, I sort of am hesitant to go and add it because I don't think it's going to... Well, obviously, you can't take it back. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know that it's going to add any anything... Feathers, man. Oh, interesting. Now that is a great feel. I still vividly remember that. What is it, train driver? Sacrifices himself. Gets eaten up by the lava. Wow. What a moment in cinematic history. Ready Player One again on the weekend. Oh, I love that movie. So many pop culture references. One of the best. I heard they made a, a sequel, or the guy wrote a sequel, a book. Ready Player Two, it was called. Innovative name. It was quite, quite badly panned, as I understand it. Uh, my friend Jay, uh, it's his favourite book. He's always like, you should read it, it's awesome. Uh, no, I never got around to reading it. The new one top or the original? Yeah. That's my understanding as well, mate. Well, that's how I feel about the film, so... G'day, Jen. Uh, well, that wouldn't surprise me, but I'll tell you what, the amount of cultural references they did have in the film was outrageous. They packed it in there. Alright. I think... I'm just fucking around with the sake of fucking around now. Have a final 
go. Hey, I just met you. Uh, I just need to do these feet. So I didn't do the feet because they were covered by glue and blue tack. And I realised that I needed to do them and I pulled it off and did a test fit before. Thank you. Ah, oh, you're right, Dave. Don't have to apologise, mate. Don't owe me anything, pal. Alright, let's just do a quick review. Tweak that a little bit, a bit. Tell you what, the Expanse season three is tremendous, tremendous television. I enjoyed it very much. What else did I watch on the weekend? I don't recall doing too much on the weekend. We had the women's NRL season start. Um, so my girlfriend and I watched that, which was unreal. And that was about it this little torrential downpour to deal with. Just distracted. It was really good, hey? Okay, cool. I feel like so, I won't say anything because I don't want to ruin it for people that may not have watched it. So, I shan't. <laughs> Alright, so we might just add some uh, browns into this, this thing going on over here. So, let's grab some of the best brown. Rhinoxide. Mix in a little bit of black.
other note, I just like doing little little feathery bits like this. I find it usually makes the uh, the wings look a little more interesting. So we'll put we'll put the this chick on the base and then do a big old review I think when Bucks uh, is ready to go. Uh, no, it's actually uh, Rhinox hide mixed in with a little bit of black, mate. Um, so it's getting uh, it's getting more into brown than black. Uh, it's probably hard to. Oh, you can see a little bit of brown in it from there. And then the last the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a dark green, um, a bluey green, and I'm going to. Um, Sharpen out a lot of the uh, uh, shadows. Uh, I, I have taken classes uh, with some great painters, with Meg Maples, with um, Roman Gruber, I actually took a class with Raphael Pika from Massive Voodoo uh, and I do think that um, that classes are an integral part of improving but I think you've got to take them at the right time I don't think that um, you'll get maximum value out of a class they'll always be good um, I think for, for anyone that's wanting to improve but I don't think uh, you get full value out of it until you have uh, a good understanding of how you paint. And for a lot of people, uh, the thing that's holding them back is not, is not knowledge, it's actual technical painting uh, time. They don't spend enough time painting for them to improve. Uh, there's a couple of people in this, uh, in this chat who are improving a lot and um, all they've really done is just is just paint, 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 paint. Jared's one. Jared probably JC paints. He probably um, was doing mostly army stuff, and then decided to get into some really serious display painting last year, and has just been going gangbusters. But it's just it's just paint, paint, paint. Honestly, that will that will get you ninety five percent of the way. Is paint, paint, paint. Ooh. 
Uh, so now I'm just going to make sure I catch the shadows again. This is a dark green. Yep, so I wrote a, I wrote a really uh, wanky article uh, where I talk about what I believe the important things are for improving as a painter. Um, and very, very f few parts of it are about sitting down and taking classes. It's all about understanding your goals and understanding what you're trying to achieve and, you know, being open to failing and all sorts of stuff. I'm sure someone's got the link they can post. Top's usually got it on standby. It's called The Psychology of Miniature Painting by the great man, Big Deno Paints. <laughs> now, the, the the purpose the purpose for writing that article for me was just like people are always asking me, "Oh, how how'd you fucking how'd you get so good?" and you know what. What do I have to do to be like you? And fuck, mate. See ya, entity. Have a great day, mate. On your top. Uh, anyone can do it. That was my point. Anyone can do it. Uh, you've just got to be willing to make some sacrifices in your life. To be able to do it. Thank you, yes. It's a Gryffindor tie, mate. Gryffindor. For the brave, it's Party Monday. We wear ties on Party Monday. All right, fuck it. I don't feel like doing any more on that. That's the only angle you see the wings from is that side. So let's let's do it. Let's do it. There's my pants and my tie and my legs and my tattoo. Here we go. Let's go all the way back here. This is my painting area. You can all see my painting area. Glorious. Boom. I'm just trying to make sure I get it the right angle so we can zoom in a bit. It's a bit much. Still here, just behind the lights. Uh, yeah, so the concept. Let me see if I can find the picture. Actually, <laughs> so I posted it somewhere a while back. Yeah, the concept was um, I wanted to do something slightly different to my uh, last diorama slash project where I was very um, segmented and split them into scenes um, and so I took uh, this grey picture that was designed using my magnificent photoshop skills <laughs> where I kind of plotted out how I wanted all of the all of the dudes to stand and so I drew like yeah here's a Here's a chasm, and here's a fucking dude standing up on top of a thing, and blah blah blah. It's surprising how much it actually looks like that. I mean, obviously, not shit, but pretty good. 
Um, so I wanted to split it into individual scenes in the same way that I did with Camelot, but have it be much more about a larger narrative. So um, there's there's this, these two fighting, these two fighting, these two fighting, these two fighting. This dude, the guy who's cracked the spell and started the lava, and then this chick overlooking the the world and working out where she's going to be needed. So that is the premise. Uh, where I think we we went maybe uh, wrong. Wrong, maybe not being the right word, but. Uh, by trying to have a cohesive and unified um, uh, theme across uh, the two forces, because we've obviously got the the Romans who've come out of the portal, and uh, the Hyperboreans who are coming to defend their homeland. Uh, what I what I found was I was getting into the um, uh, I was getting into the color palette a little bit too much, and so there's a disconnect between the two sides. Now, uh, if you notice, all of the all of the Romans are around the center, um, with the with the orange uh, sort of radiating outwards. And as you get further and further out, it gets colder and colder. Um, I had to break that rule for this guy, though. So. Uh, Hello, I'm a floating man. So there's a little lake here. I might pick up my camera and show you around. Show you around, eh? Welcome. Yeah, there's just a bit of a disconnect, right, between those things. So, um, let's have a closer look. Yeah, so this guy, he's fighting up against this dude who's actually facing like this. Um, that scene is actually the one that I would like to go back and reposition. Um, unfortunately, in, in the best front-on angle for this, every little scene uh, has its own really good viewing angle, except this one he gets lost in this guy. I would have liked to either move this guy over or move this guy across a little bit so there's a much clearer um, position. So these two are awesome. This is the best the best scene, I reckon. This guy fucking... Boom! Actually jumping down. Uh, this guy at the back, he's okay. He's fine. This chick's defending off against the bear. Here's my little, here's my little uh, pondy bit just here. That's, there's going to be water in there. And then this chick who ended up being actually not a bad paint job in the end. I thought she was going to be terrible, but she ended up being pretty good. Look at that 4K camera. Quality plus. He was fun to paint. Uh, yeah, this guy, this guy is great. Uh, ended up being pretty cool. I was thinking about doing lava, but I ended up just liking the orange. It tied it in with this lava skin. Uh, this chick's a trickier model to paint than she looks. Really tricky to paint. This guy was awesome. Ended up being like an absolute breeze, an absolute dream to paint. Uh, and then the bear up the back. The bear was pretty fun to paint. This chick I did not love, but I did a good job on a non-metallic metal on her spear there. Um, so that is that is the end of this diorama, I think. I'll put the Valkyrie on and we'll just have a look. If I'm going to make any changes, friends, now is your opportunity. Now is your opportunity to call it out and say, Deno, this looks shit house. You need to fix it.
Why would you get in your home? Get in your home. She's sort of floating down like that. I actually need to straighten that foot out, I think. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll pour the resin and I want to add a few more water effects to a few areas, but I think, I think that's about done, friends. I think we can call it a day. You know, if I wanted to, if I wanted to get in and do another hundred hours worth of work on these models, I could, I could, like I could literally, uh, I could literally just keep going forever. Yeah, interesting, Dave. Interesting thoughts, mate. I sort of like the orange because it ties him into the lava. <laughs> He's a hellhound after all, that's, that's what that dude is. Um, I just want this chip, there we go, there we go. <laughs> no, I, I don't know that I've got much uh, much left in me for this piece, honestly. I've been going hard on it for five weeks, so I think we might call it a day. I'll definitely need to add a few little little touches. Yeah, you think no gloss and lava? Yeah, okay. Um, I might just... Uh, that guy comes off. I might just do. So I've been using this for my um, uh, for my whoop, camera. Look here. Whoop. I've been using this for my uh, my water effects uh, just because it's easy, quick and easy. So I'm just going to put some. on this tree watch yourself just to make it look like the snow has melted on the tree Oh, thanks, Joe. Didn't have to do that, mate. G'day, Nashland. Uh, that'll that should fix that tree a little bit because that was standing out at me that that wasn't glossy. Um, On your Dave, thanks buddy. Yep, appreciate your feedback as always, my friend.
Look, I like it, friends. I think there's no doubt that I could have done some things differently. Um, there's no doubt that I could continue to push on various areas, but you do have to call time on a project sometimes, even when you feel like there's more to be done just for your sake of your sanity. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know that, uh, that anything I do now is going to add much more value over and above. And when I say value, right, I don't mean monetary value. Uh, I mean the value of the final piece. I'm not a I'm not a an expert when it comes to pushing myself on a project, you know, like going harder and harder until the project's finished, finished. You know, Dave's Dave's much more of a uh, a perfectionist than I am. He, he goes hard until something's absolutely finished, and that's just not my way. Um, I want to stop something when I feel like I still love it. Which is a hard ask sometimes. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Uh, yeah. All right. I'm putting. I'm putting this. Putting the pin in it there. No more. No more today. Uh, thank you. I'll come back in a few weeks time and pour the resin and maybe you know, tweak a couple of little bits and pieces here or there, but that is a diorama complete. Thank you. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'll probably be taking this to the Queensland Model Hobby Expo in Brisbane. It has been a slog, yeah. Um, And that'll be about it, I think. Assuming I sell it, that'll be the last. Um, that'll be the last event. Oh, if I take it to that event, I might not get a chance, but hopefully I will. Okay, let's go. So that brings us back to these great friends, <laughs> who we're going to try and finish off. It has been look. You know, it's it's funny um, you say that, Bucks. You're like, wow, what a slog it's been. Um, <laughs> I started that uh, only like... Let me go and have a look because it's still on my thing. January 7th, I drew my pictures. January 8th, I started building the base. And it was on January 27th that I started painting. So it's actually literally been a month. A month of painting. Feels like longer. Feels like longer. I need that. 
weird, isn't it? Feels like longer. Yeah. Check this leg out, by the way. Fucking hell. Good leg. Painted that on the word miniature string. What a fucking absolute banger that is. Just absolute banger. Uh, yeah, Camelot was bigger. Camelot was a bit bigger. Um, yeah. I think it was bigger in terms of... <laughs> the leg. <laughs> yeah. I, f I feel so bad on the fucking... On the... Uh, the streams for um, word miniatures. I, d I painted that on word miniatures stream. It's from this guy. It's from a big, massive big robot. Where is he? Yeah, here he is. Look at the size of him. He's a fucking monster. He's got a big fucking shooty gun. Yeah, here's his leg. So we're gonna do that whole whole dude in non-metallic metal and do some OSL. Something like that. Oh, Deno, that's one of your best, mate. <laughs> ah, see ya, Pascal. Good luck, mate. Have a good stream if you're streaming. All right. Yeah, just dropped something. I don't know what it was. Well, I do actually, it was this that still had this in it, which is excellent. I've got some on my head. Anyway. Uh, Alright, I think this comes out. It does. Good job, Deno. Oh, yes, we like that. Look at all this. sculpting tonight. As you know, I'm not much of a sculptor, friends, but I get by. So I'm going to try and... Ooh. Extract. Thanks for the follow, mates. What do you mean, now all the classics? Indeed. I'm about to lose control and I think I like it. I'm so excited. Oh, I need to actually have a look at this piece, uh, the original. F.E.R. Miniatures. Where is this fucking, where are these releases? There they are. No, it didn't get the missing piece, so we're sculpting it, mate. <laughs> we are sculpting the piece.
if we can. Let's see how we go. I am going to... Should I put it on the screen? No, I'll just put it there. Zoom in. All right. <laughs> this should be fun. Okay, so if you haven't seen me do any sculpting before, it is a disaster. <laughs> but we have a bit of fun. Um, however, the first thing we're going to do is uh, just glue these bits in place. And then we're going to put a stronger framework down there with uh, some of my favourite putty, which is the uh, need it. Yeah, this stuff is absolutely ten out of ten. building up stuff quickly. If you're like if you're like me and you don't like waiting for your toy soldiers to dry. <laughs> um, so I'm using this to, to build up the uh, frame And this is why I feel this is important to do this, is because Dead said, trying to sculpt when stuff just moves around like this, I don't know how they do it. Never been able to get it to work. So in about five minutes, this is going to dry and we're going to be able to proceed with our sculpting. So we'll use this opportunity to do a bit of clean up. It's got shit everywhere. Oh, what a momentous, what a momentous knife, finishing it off. Bucks, you ready to go, yeah? Reorganise my painting desk. Stuff 
in order. It's fucking exciting. Here, let's have a look at some Nico Galaxy models that arrived. Uh, we're doing uh, we're doing the pirates. I'm doing these three. This one, this one, and this one. We're going to turn them into pirates. Bucks is going to do three other pirates. I'm going to put them together on a sh on a thing. It's going to be awesome. G'day, Abe. Uh, yeah, I bought I bought all these Nico models for um, surprise, surprise, another diorama. Uh, we're gonna have uh, floating cyberpunk city that lights up. <laughs> Apparently, it's just gonna be great. <laughs> So I bought all these Nico models to just have sitting around my Cyberpunk city. This chick with her dog. Mark, mark, mark. This chick riding a special motorcycle. Oh yeah, look at me. Look at that ass. This chick. Also this chick. And this chick. Yes, that is correct. A, yeah, Hugo. We'll call him Hugo for sure. Yes, it is going to be a cyberpunk city that has, that is floating. <laughs> and it's going to be, um, yeah, cyberpunk city floating and uh, has LEDs wired all through it so it lights up and flashes and stuff. I might think about doing smoke effects and who knows. Should be fun. It's not fully dry yet, I'm just trimming down a few bits that might get in the way. Alright, so there's two there's two materials I've used sculpting putty for. Uh, this is Magi Sculpt. I don't actually know where you can buy it from normally, but I bought it from El Greco Miniatures. And uh I really like it. The problem with Magi Sculpt is that I have a tendency for it to, um, uh, when I'm doing it over this, is I can't actually tell where's Magi Sculpt and where's not. So um, if I've done this building up volumes first, then I usually like to use Millie Putt, which is very similar and stuff, but it's just yellow. So it's easier for me to tell what's what's what. Um, It's been such a long time with this project, these goals, that I sort of feel like I want to do non-metallic metal on it now. And I was making a big deal about doing true metallics. Alright, 
here is my items you cannot live without when you are sculpting. Number one. This this sort of object a Rooney. Uh, a flat jobbo. This is the uh, Citadel sculpting tool that they came out with many, many years ago. And it's actually surprisingly useful. G'day, Paul. Um, like, I use it all the time. It's good shape. Um, yeah. Recommend something like this. And I recommend metal. Second thing is a pointy sticky thing like this. Dentist tool. Can't go wrong really. And then some soft rubbery bits. This one's a flat one. This is a hard texture. This is a soft one. And this is, yeah. What I've found with whatever sculpting tools you use, and I'm probably the wrong person to ask about sculpting because I don't do it very much at all. Um, with these rubber bits, I think they're more designed for a, a sculpting material like Sculpey, not um, the, the epoxies. Because what I've found is that these get dried epoxy and stuff on them. You can't get it off because it gets stuck on there and they lose their efficacy. But um, yeah, you can usually just clean them up a bit and they're okay. Um, and then the, th the final piece of the puzzle is a... Um, a paintbrush. Uh, mate, yeah, not great. It's pissing down with rain right now. Um, my uh, carpet in my bedroom got flooded. Get a salad bum. Any relation to salad fingers? Salad fingers and salad bum would have a good time together. You'd have to imagine. <laughs> Alright. You hardened up. Enough. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put some flat <laughs> put some flat bits of this on first. Really is, mate. Really, really is. Thank you, Salad Bum. Yeah, this is a uh, this is um, a project from a while back. Uh, this is what I was working on about uh, about fifteen minutes ago. You're about fifteen minutes behind uh, checking this bad boy out. Okay, let's go. Alright, hang on a second, Buxy. Let's gonna put this stuff on. Alright. Thanks, mate. Bucks links in the chat, mate, and the password is Deno, Big Deno Four. What a legend I am! Got no passwords. Thanks, Scarabost. Uh, yes. So I, I look. I've been working on that um, for the last four or five weeks. So um, you would hope it looks good by that that amount of effort, wouldn't you?
Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, what a what an interesting time, hey? Yeah, man, it's an absolute base of a project. With all of them, it's dumb. It's in the rearview mirror already. It is. Uh, it's a collection of figures, salad bum from a Kickstarter that came out um, a little little period of time ago, mid mid last year. But they're not from any any um, any specific game or anything like that. Having a bit of a scalp, mate. Yeah, I should have done this fucking weeks ago, mate. Like it was just piss weak effort of me. Well, I think we had some banter about it on Crimson Brush chat. Yeah. A couple of months back now. No rib. <laughs> Bro, it's hot again down here. Wow. I'm eating a, I'm eating the greatest icy pole ever invented. You and fucking icy poles, man, I'll tell you what. <laughs> oh, I love them, mate. Frosty fruit, watermelon frosty fruit icy poles are the hottest icy pole going this summer. You are you are an absolute joker. Yeah. I like what I like, mate. Nah. That's to be commended, my friend. To be commended. <laughs> and I try to make as much people around me as I can also like what I like. There's nothing wrong with knowing who you are. No. Lots of news, friend. It's um it's a bit it's a bit wild up your end of town at the moment. It is, yeah, we've got um yeah, we've got flooding and all sorts of fucking crazy times. Good night, All Might for One, or good morning, good day. See you, All Might. Hello, yeah. chat, by the way. How is everyone? My friend Bucks has joined us for the, for the rest of the evening's festivities. Bucks will post his socials and so on and so forth, I'm sure. I so shall. He can, so he can lapdog onto, lap onto my views. Coattail rider that he is. That is me. True parasite. Fucking <laughs> 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 uh, hell. Uh, let's do this, yeah. Most of the people probably have, know who I am. Yes, mate. If you don't. Mornings, Jan. How are you, mate? Hello. Yes. Oh, hey, everyone. That is me. How you going, Paul? Evening, Jared. How are you? Mate, great result, JC, on the weekend, on the Sunday. What happened to JC? Uh, they uh, So the first of the Sydney meetups, monthly meetups. Oh, right ahead. yeah, that's um, right. Yeah, I was, keen to, I was keen to talk about that, actually. Yeah, 10, 10 people turned up, I think, or 11. Awesome. Um, some, some prestigious... Some prestigious, 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 some prestigious current names and, and older names. I think Kyle Morgan turned up. From oh, back Kyle. In the day and Steve Grau and Oh, wow, that's great. They're legends. Love those guys. Um, awesome. Yeah, Sed was there, I assume, and and uh, yeah, the, JC was there. Wes was there. Um, Liam Paints got down to it, so oh. that was the first time I think meeting some of our boys, some of our clan. That guy's a fucking legend. Yeah, can I just say, the guy's, it feels like the guy's come out of nowhere, hey? I'm just like... He's, he's, he's quite young, apparently, Jim was saying. Is he? Um, and lovely, which is, you know, like a hallmark of most miniature painters, isn't it? It is. Fuck, we've got, fuck we got a great scene. Appreciation scene. Throwing it out there. Appreciate you all. You're all wonderful. I appreciate you slightly less than Bucks does, but yeah, still... Still appreciate you all. He is, he is Nick. He top. He is a, um, he is a Sydney, Sydney-based painter. Yeah, we're powerhouses, mate. We're coming up in this world. <laughs> all right. So, uh, I like to like to block everything out. You can see what we need to do here is actually add a little bit more musculature at the top here. 
um, and we just need to skinny up this uh, wrist area a bit. Yeah, he looks like he's um, he's definitely left-handed and works that out a bit at the moment. Yeah, doesn't doesn't mind a little bit of time to himself. No, you know what? Scary times back then. There was. probably wasn't too many enjoyable things. So. Yeah. Take your enjoyment where you can get it, mate, hey? Indeed, indeed. And you shan't be shamed for it. No. Scary times now, well, for that matter. <laughs> it really is. It really, really is. And I shan't be shamed for it. No. No, it's, uh... Yeah. It is wild times out in the world, friends, so... It, wherever you it, it are. It feels like it, doesn't it? It feels like there's been no reprieve. Look, he is carrying a big banner, so we'll cut him some slack on that front. Alright, so as we start to get into uh, the actual shapes, um, the first, yeah, I like to build up the whole volume and then cut back a little bit. I think some people who sculpt uh, maybe do it in a different way. They go a little bit more... A um, little, bit, little bit by a little bit by yeah, a little additive. bit, just building it up. I believe the two type, the term is additive and subtractive. So yes, I'm an additive uh, or subtractive type normally. Because I find it easier to go backwards than add more on. But, what ifs. I literally should have done this fucking before I started my stupid camel fucking thing. But yeah, is it is it mean is it uh, not excited to go back sort of situation well, now? It's sort of we're doing it because we need to. Yeah, what I actually am yeah. thinking is I might I might just go non-metallic metal because then I'm like oh yeah I can, I can practice some more cool shapes and stuff you know. So, yeah. Uh, which was the not the intent, but I feel like that might be the only way I can get excited about the project again. Yeah, to just do it all non-metal. Yep. Particularly now that I've got a good bronze technique up my sleeve. You, you have gained a good bronze, and I actually, I actually think that your um, your steel might have leveled up, scaled up a little bit lately. Yep. Yeah, I'm starting to I'm starting to find a, a good groove, I think, with the uh, the old metallics. Yeah, well, you, I, th I feel like you're, you're like you're more ambitious lately with it too. Like you're um, you're painting bigger things, bigger and bigger things. Like that robot's massive, right? Yes, yeah. it's, it's a decent project for a non metallic project. He's a big bopper. Ah, oh, there's it. It. I'm I'm glad you're on, mate, because it's always a, it's always nice to have a chat after a big project. Oh, absolutely, it is. Like it's a there's a lot to chat about too. Like it's you know five. Five weeks, like, if we can acknowledge this chat, five, five weeks for Deno on a project is, like, a year for everyone else. <laughs> like, that's a real long time here to be on one thing. It is a long time. Yeah. That's why I, 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 I just pumped some, some hot congratulations in the chat, because, you know. Um, taking it out of the comfort zone. Good shit. You, you really you really do like find out a little bit more about yourself when you get to that <laughs> you know like you just you go yep <laughs> uh, you, yeah 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 the, the <laughs> there's a bit of soul searching in pieces like that isn't yeah, there you're just like why am I doing this to myself like honestly I just don't know why I'm doing it and then yeah you hit you hit that uh, halfway point and it just feels like, oh my god, I've still got such a long way to go. <laughs> uh, I think we maybe just need a tiny bit more in the bicep region. Uh, important one that Tops put in the in the chat there. So for the next Neko Galaxy bust up pre-order, you can pay full price to get ten euro donated to UK Ukraine funds, or get it for five euro. That's wonderful. 
Um, there is there is so many things like uh, hobby-based stuff out of Ukraine that I just didn't realize, and that's all starting to come to light now. Europe's so interconnected, right? And we, we in many ways, we don't realize that. But, yeah. Yeah, I think, is it the, the Scale Modeling International or something like that, the magazine that, yep. that operates through Facebook as well? But that's, that's Ukraine-based. I saw that the other day. Anyway, yes. Are you going to be picking up that um, that Mecha Galaxy, mate? Uh, is that the one that um, Top posted in Top of the News? Most likely, yeah. Mm. Uh, I like all of Mecha Galaxy's busts. I like all of their this figures. Is true. So, strong Actually, possibility. Speaking of which, um, uh, who's is it? Uh, what about that new um, Big Child? Oh yeah. Yeah. That's going in the diorama, right? That's got to fit so well. Yeah, she's uh, she's pretty special, actually. All right. So that's pretty good. So the paintbrush is used um, for smoothing out the milli putt. You can just use water for that. You don't need to do anything else. Um, uh, watched a video where a dude used white spirits and it looked really good um, but I found water does exactly the same so no need to go and get yourself a white spirit and smell some weird shit you can just use water that's uh, literally what I'm about to use right now for blind spirits, but for a different for a different part of sculpting. Sculpy is a different yeah. beast. Yeah, different beast. So, look, I do not claim to be an expert in anatomy <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination, but there's a few little little things that I think are important to know. The musculature of um, of arms is because sculpting arms is often probably one of the things you find yourself doing the most. So, uh, forearm muscles this is a good example. You have this big forearm muscle here, you have a, a line that runs underneath. This is actually um, sort of this, this area here, so we're going to do that in a second. Uh, and then uh, the uh, this big bulgy bit here, which I sort of already got here, but We'll continue to um, refine. I'm having a, um, a miniature identity crisis for this uh, latest base that I'm doing. <laughs> Tell me more. I think I've got to cut the uh, the Frazetta looking. Um, Conan Barbarian type model from Games Workshop. Yeah. He, so he probably wants to be in a colder, more moodier environment than the way the base turned out. Yep. Um, so I think I'm going to opt into one of those little Rackham uh, little dwarf ones. Oh, yeah. I'll take a photo of each of them. I'm going to put it in. Good chat. I think there's some already some photos. Oh, Tai Tune by followers. Thank you, buddy. All you have to do right now for me to agree to buy followers is for you to say, Big Dano, you are a legend. And I will put $100 onto your whatever that click is straight away. Tai Tune 69. Just say, Big Dano, you are a legend. And I'm in. 
you have 10 seconds. Oh, mate, you can do it. Five, four, three, two, one. Tytune69, you are the weakest link. Goodbye. <laughs> Mate, I probably would have, you know, if you had a said big dinner, you're a legend. I probably would put a hundred bucks on this. You gotta be careful because I've been listening. Benny's been telling me a lot of stories lately. Benny, Benny's quite a prank star deep down, and and the sort of pranks that Ben likes to pull are they, those exact pranks. Pranks. So don't be surprised if he gets a hold of this because he'll watch this, and he'll come in as a bot. He'll come in submarine in as a bot, type that exact message, and then hit you with a. Give me a hundred bucks. That's the greatest. <laughs> oh, Scarabost. Where do I sign up, mate? Ah, oh, dear. There you go. It's a choice of those two. I'm leaning on the rack of mine quite a lot. I very much like the rack and one. Put put the pictures in the chat, mate, so people can people can understand what you're talking about. Alrighty then. And then finally, we can put the base in there as well, eh? So I'll do a little bit of smoothing um, with a Dremel on probably tomorrow morning. What's going on, Cujo? Everyone should go follow Cujo. He's a fucking legend. Oh, big whale! The big whale, mate. What's going on, you legend? I finished, uh, I finished my big diorama, mate. I've got a picture, actually. I'll show you. Big Whale's my friend from Tasmania. Who is not currently inundated with water. Yes, we are, we are moist up here, mate. But it's actually, I mean, yeah, look. You sort of get used to it, mate. <laughs> here's here's what I finished it, Wiley. Thanks, mate. It's right behind me, actually. Here it is. We're leaving tonight. I swear there is nowhere to run. You live in town. 
Remember that song, Box? Do. Final Countdown was a good, was a good song. It's the it? What was it called? Europe, Europe. or something like that? Europe. Europe. Yeah. It's the final countdown. Uh, not sure yet. We haven't we haven't sold it yet, but um, yeah, if if we do sell it, we'll have to build another box and send it somewhere. So one of the one of the weird things about like that sort of project box is you, you get to that point right where you're posting pictures of it or you're taking pictures of it and looking at them and you're just going like fucking hell. It doesn't feel like anything's changed and I've been working for a week. You know, like yeah. you can barely yeah. you can barely see anything's changed. Yeah, mate, I think I think that's that whole where the photo becomes a chore and um, the rewards start to become smaller and smaller and smaller. Uh, yeah, so Wiley, we've got uh, we've got a um, a dentist pick, which I which I got from a dentist. We've got a little rubber um, uh, flat little rectangle thing. We've got a uh, a rubber shaper, which is a cone, and then we've got the old Games Workshop uh, jobo. Hey, 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 Jobs. Yeah. Everyone saying hello to you. <laughs> Hi. All right. I'm not going to do anything that's going to make that better, I don't think. So let's give that a little bit more. And then, so on the, uh, on the, a box art it's actually got a little another little sleeve thing there so i'll do a little leather sleeve thing but is it like a little wrist brace yeah a little wrist brace uh no well, it, it well the, the cast is good but they didn't send me the arm <laughs> so so i just built it you should have done that months ago All right, let's pick which one of these Games Workshop figures we're going to do first. Let's do this rat guy. Yeah, he was the one that you were least enthusiastic yeah, for, so that's not getting out of the way early. Yeah, rat guy. All right, let's use a little bit of this stuff. You still coming up to Brisbane, Wiley? Come on, mate. It's a good time to visit. Bring a canoe. Just, just canoe up instead. <laughs> Catch a wave. Perfect time. Perfect time to come visit. I was talking at work today, right? It's just like... Yeah. When are we going to get a fucking break, eh? Hey? <laughs> Yeah. The last the last few years has just been fucking ridiculous. <laughs> it's been quite a wild ride, hasn't it? It has. From from mostly from our desks, to be honest, in Australia. Yeah. Which has been the one part of the whole process that I can say has been a real blessing in disguise. It's just been being able to paint and talk to my friends. Yeah. Um, I don't think that guy needs any more, just use... So I'm starting to see some movement now on Katsuya, Katsura Otako, Otoko. Yes, I saw Jim. Jim a, a few of our friends are, um, are, are getting on that. Mm. Uh, I believe Ben is also. Yes, I have mine sitting there. Oh, yeah, me too. Maybe that has to go up the, uh, up the list. Did you, did you, Wiley, did you cancel the, uh, the Easter trip, did you, with the, the Tanusa? Oh, okay, cool. That's still happening early Easter. Early Easter. Oh, yep, yeah, okay, gotcha. It's going to be some serious board gaming ongoing on then. Oh. Mate, 
And one of them comes up, spends a weekend with me. I don't reckon we come up for air except to go, to, go out for dinner. We just yeah. play fucking board games non-stop. It's awesome. I love it. What are you guys going to be wheeling when you are, when he comes up? Uh, Spirit well, Island's going to be getting a show? Or? Well, yeah, I don't actually have a copy of Spirit Island myself, but I could borrow one with all the bits and pieces. I know Whaley's a fan of that. Uh, we'll, we'll see if we can get a couple of other players and do some Eclipse, some Twilight Imperium. Whaley's a big fan of Twilight Imperium. Uh, and then, yeah, I've got a couple of new games to show him. Uh, I'm going to make him play a game of Kingdom Death with me, see if we can cut a lion's dick off. Um, Good luck, Whaley. Let's see what else. See what else we can do. <laughs> you might have your head bitten off in the process. <laughs> Round one, turn one. First action, head gone. Scarabost. You, you, you would be surprised, mate. So, um, my on my birthday two years ago, we actually played two games of Twilight Imperium in a single day. Uh, four players, mind you. But we, we played a five or six player game of uh, Twilight Imperium in about four or five hours. Because um, we use an app. There's a little app you can download. I put it on my computer and I run the game. Piece of cake. Works really well. 10 out of 10. Alright, I think we've got a little Wolfie to assemble. Yeah, we and, and I think we've played like fourteen games of it now with my with my gaming group and everyone knows the rules. And yeah, we just we just go hammer and tong. It's awesome. I wouldn't want to play the game for fucking ten hours and couldn't imagine it, it would be awful. So yeah, that'll be good fun, Bucks though. It's awesome. It's exciting times for us coming up, mate. It's a couple of fellas having birthdays. Oof. Well, oh, it's T minus one week for me. It is. And what are you, your T minus uh, six days? Indeed. Get amongst it. Sunday's just going to be a, a time. Get up, catch the stream, have a paint, have, have a birthday. Yeah, good. Go to sleep, wake up, have a paint, catch a stream. Have, have a, a birthday. birthday. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go. So, chat's let me down. They're giving me no feedback at all on whether I should take Rackendorf uh, or Rack Games Workshop, Conan. Oh, so, oh. I'm just taking Rackendorf. Yeah, I'll give you the feedback, mate. Rackendorf's the guy. Yeah. Rackendorf every day. Thoughts on Katsuru Otoko? I haven't really got any any concrete ideas, actually. Um, well, I was going to link mine pretty directly to my um, to my Akali. Oh yeah. With the um, with the Kami Kamigawa. What are they called? Not Kamigawa. That's bloody magic. Tamagotchi. Um, no. Uh, was it Tamagotchi? Yeah, it was definitely Tamagotchi. <laughs> Kabuki mask, sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was going to link it to that and potentially mimic the same the same pattern onto the um, onto the moon, but stylize it and, and, and push it a little bit further. Yep. Hey, Whaley, if uh, you're free tomorrow night, we're, we're not going to be doing games, so I can play some Spirit Island if you're free. I like that idea, Bucks. I like that idea. Would you put the two of them on a, on a plinth together? I, I would, and I would have the Acolyte at the foreground and, and obviously Katsuri in the background um, sort of pushing the Acolyte forward. Which means I would then have to mimic all of the OSL yep. and all of the lighting. <laughs> that, would that, that would be fun. That would be fun. Yeah. However, I think that I would probably have rather have done it all together in that case. <laughs> Indeed. But, I'm not that smart, so. 
I've got nothing. I'm, I'm drawing blanks. No good ideas, really. Well, we should hash something out. Or are you, are you looking to keep it hush hush like we did for the other ones? Look, mate, I wouldn't mind hush hush, but yeah, I'm sure. Let's keep it hush hush. Yeah. But no, let's let's talk about ideas and then I'll hush hush which one I fucking pick. Which one you want to pick? <laughs> All right. So, like, what are you what are you thinking? So, like, let's let's look at some standard tropes. Uh, Here's the model we're talking about, everyone. If you if you're interested. This guy with the moon face. And I really like Jim's take so far, actually. Can I just say yeah, that? Yeah. How cool is Jim's take? He's gone for really warm. Almost like flying in the face of what the figure is and going like a, a sun feel. Yeah. So, I'm get, uh, so Ben's vibe was moonlight. Was that, yes. that, that was what he's going for? Yeah, okay. Yeah, well, he's, he wants to paint almost like a... I think he was saying almost like a human face onto the moon and then the rest in dark. Yeah. Okay. We know what Bun's doing. Yeah, Bun's is the the winner winner chicken dinner for mine. Uh, Eva is uh, is going just Eva ham. Yep, traditional <laughs> nutcase level horse. Free ham. Yep. Uh, so that leaves well you and me. You got you got some you you and I. You got some yokai. You could lean into the yokai theme of it, the you know. It's supposed to be a Japanese ghost, right? But also, he's wearing like very traditional Japanese clothes, so you could push down a samurai path potentially. So the only thing that's come to mind is I grabbed the board game Rising Sun, which has really awesome artwork done by Adrian Smith. Yeah, I know Adrian Smith. Uh, and Been around for a long time. Oh yeah, he's a fucking legend. And find something from that that I like in terms of the colour palette. Mm -hmm. you, ever seen, you ever seen the, the board game Rising Sun? Oh, let's, go, let's go have a look at it. Fuck man, I will show you, it's mad. Yeah, let's go have a look at it. I know, I know Ben's been using some Ghost of Tsushima. Um, uh, uh, as a um, as sort of like a mood board type thing, so. Not that one. This one. So this is this is the board game Rising Sun. Yeah. Which is awesome. Uh, very cool board game. We've played it a number of times. But yeah, there's all these fucking awesome models. I've painted about. I think I've got seven models left to paint. But I'll scroll down and show you some of the artwork. It's pretty mad. I think they got. Um, Phoenix. Yeah, I can't remember who they got for for this, but the 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 painter, the box painter, was awesome. I think it might have been um, Robert Carlson. Actually, might have done these. Rogland. Yeah, Rogland. I'll tell you a fun story about this guy, Kotahi, in a second. I don't know. Yeah, he's like Monkey King, is he? Yeah, Monkey, like Monkey King. King. I've, I've told it before on the stream, but it's fucking gold. Um. Yes, yeah, so this is all Adrian Smith artwork. He did all the artwork for the game. Look at this guy, fucking Foxplan Shinto. But if you go up, that like like they, yeah. So there, yeah, the Foxplan Shinto, or like even the 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 Yokai sort of girl would be cool. Fire Dragon color palette's awesome. Yeah, yeah. see, look at this, this the, these these sorts of styles. Oh man, oh pure white. Look at that guy. That looks awesome. Yeah, he does look really, really cool. Sasando looks awesome, dude. That's a color palette that, like, just you don't see regularly at all, right? Yeah. yeah. What is it? It's it's a like a warm or a cold. What? what I never know whether that's a cold or a warm green. Uh, like it, it's probably cold, right? Because it's not cold. Yeah, it's yet, cold. Right? It's, it's yeah. cold. Yeah. Oh, look but it's based in grounds, which that's makes mad. it sort of tricks you into thinking it's. That yeah. guy's awesome. But I yeah, it is. There's heaps of good um, inspo here, man. Yeah, so I think Asian, yeah, see. I think the uh, the updates they did updates where they went into the artwork a little bit more. I'll show you them. Um, yeah, so I'll tell you this story. It's fucking gold. So um, the the guys who create this game, they're um, it's coming or not, and they do a lot mm -hmm. of really really good um, work, right? But one thing that yeah, they yeah. they haven't done in the past is been very very um, thorough with their research. 
So they announced this. They announced this Kotahi Monkey King, right? And mm-hmm. and everyone's like, "Wow, what the fuck's Kotahi, right?" Oh well, cool. It's a fucking Monkey King. About about six months down the track, some some Japanese guy comes in. He's like, "Hey, uh, yeah, just wanted to let you all know, um, Kotahi is not Japanese." And everyone's like, "What? What do you mean?" So it turns out that uh, Kotahi is actually um, a, a Maori word, and yeah. some some cheeky Maoris have gone on to the to the Japanese gods page on on, on wiki on wiki and have and have <laughs> edited the fucking page and it says uh, Kotahi, uh, an ancient hairy uh, farming beast, right? Because one of their guys' names was Kotahi. That's actually his last name. So they basically, mm-hmm. they basically sledged their mate and called him a fucking monkey farmer on this wiki page. And obviously they've sent him pictures and be like, yeah, suck shit, mate, you're on here, Wikipedia. <laughs> cool, cool, <laughs> and I have done they their cool research me, from Wikipedia. Beautiful. <laughs> and they've gone, this is a fucking actual Japanese god. And they've made the whole game and, and it was gone. It was like production was done, everything was done. And they've and they basically had had the whole fucking of Japan go. What are you doing with our culture? Like seriously. Yeah. yeah. And and to their credit, they put their hand up and said, "Yeah, look, honestly, we fucked up. Yep. We, next time we'll know to, to get it. You know. Blah blah blah. <laughs> but what's, research. Yeah. What's really funny is the dude ended up um, finding out about it, and he joined Board Game Geek, and he's like, "Oh yeah, hi guys, I'm actually this dude." And and everyone's like, "No, nah, no, nah, you're not really." And he's like, "No, nah, no, nah, I really am." Here's, here's my Facebook page and here's a, me being interviewed on the local area news about this fucking situation. Call me and I sent him a copy of the board game. They sent him everything for free. He just got a whole copy of the game for being such a good sport about it. <laughs> it's fucking wild. Um, Alright, yeah, so... Crazy time, though. There's a lesson there, though, isn't there? <coughs> Indeed. So, yeah, let me see. Yeah, yeah, I really like how Danilo can touch. Look at that, that's an awesome artwork. So yeah, the, there's a there's an art book of, um, of all the stuff, which is mad. I've asked for two art books for my birthday this year. Oh yeah? Dave yeah. stole my art book, you fucker. Yeah, the Brom one. Fucking wanker. Yeah, I think uh, Job Jobs tracked down uh, the art of Paul Bonner for me. I never wanted that book. Yeah, that book, don't you? No. No. No, I don't have any any art books. I'd like to. Here we go. Art of War. Painted clan figures. Yeah, I feel like it was Rogland who did all these. Uh, that's not yeah, really his, that's not really his style. Not really his style, man. Like he's he's actually like he pushes contrast a little further than that, doesn't he? Well, he does, but he doesn't necessarily on on this type of commission. Like okay. when he's only getting yeah, it doesn't look like him though. Yeah. I feel like that's more Emu Studio or something like that who did these. That's not Roglin's style at all. It's the non-metal metallic that's yeah. Yeah, that I'm looking for. That's one of the biggest calling cards of miniature painters is the way they do non-metal metallic. It could, could be. I don't think Angel Geraldes did Rising Sun. He did. No, nah, this he doesn't did, look like his style at all. He did Ank. Do you know whose style it kind of looks like? It kind of looks like Luca's style a little bit for stuff like this. Yeah, he did he, some like some box art for games. I don't think he was around like, back no, then. I think he was around at that time. This yeah. is like 2015. Um, I think they did all the monsters in this too. Do-ba-do-ba-do. Art of War. Ah, uh, yes. That one I'm sure was Roglin though. That was one of my favourite models I've painted. Absolute dream to paint that guy. You're not finding anyone immediately. Wow. The 
metal wheels, sweet. Anyway, they're great. So maybe I'll look for some inspiration from them. Yeah, good place. There's some good stuff there. Adrian Smith stuff's really nice. Can't go wrong. So, we're going Ratman. Yep. Ratman, I just put the just put the putty on it. Just thought I'd quickly assemble these last two bits. I've got the wolf in there, the little what are those idiots called that, that fight alongside old mate? Radical. Oh, the the V. I don't know. They're like the little Vicos, these yeah, little vampires, little, little mates, little bloodborne yeah. mates. They're like his kids, I think. Yeah. Okay, let's That's go. A very elaborate base that one. This is this is the her base. I'm gonna enjoy paying this. Paying How this. good is it? Such a good base. Mm. And this little wolfie stands in here. Cool. Um. Yeah, I might just check these ones and see if I can put any putty, putty on them. Well, I've got a little bit of leftover putty. You always find yourself a little clumps of leftover putty. Always, mate. I'm playing with two clumps of Sculpey in my hand right How's now. How's this fucker? Look, 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 <laughs> at this, look at this old Bobby Dazzler here. Fucking big old chunker there. Yeah. Mess, messed up there. Right. Yeah, always over mix on Millie Putt. Any waddles of these two have oh. turned out quite nice, haven't they? They're sublime, man. He's such a good painter. I can't... Yeah. I really like the warmth. Um... Coming off the off the braziers, yeah, and brands. Right, so I figure I've got one more base to paint. Yeah. So what's going on with your bases? You've just been obsessed with bases recently. I don't know. I just got. I just think I got like quite fixated on it. I'm wanting to to perfect that, or not perfect it, but you know. Put a bunch of work into into understanding the, the craft of basing, um, the telling of the story, story, and creating the atmosphere. Do you feel um, like I, you I, have? I believe I believe there's so many techniques that you use in basing that it's a really great place to just skill up. Uh, and it's really it's just really enjoyable, you know, like doing all the different elements, uh, all the different mediums you use. You know, down to yesterday, right? Yeah, uh, Job Job and I were. Um, were out in some hobby shops, uh, just scanning around looking for bits and bobs. And, um, you know, AK's got their leaves range now. And I'm like, oh, I can just buy some leaves. I've got some at home, but I'd have to color them all. And she just looks at me and she's like, yeah, it's, it's kind of cheating though, isn't it, mate? If you're not sort of doing them all yourself. And I'm really just telling me up, eh? Cop that. Uh, so, yeah, she just, she just laid me out, you know? Uh, I'm supposed to be my number. I'm supposed to marry this woman, chat, in less than two weeks. Um, and she's just telling me up like that. Um, so anyway, I came home and jumped in jumped in a hobby hangout with some mates and um, spent the day uh, painting leaves and individually drying them and then individually placing them all. Uh, had a lot of fun doing it. And she said, she sort of just, you know, doubled down at the end of the day. She sort of came in and said, see? wouldn't have had something that looks like that if you didn't have me to tell you, you know, how it is. And so, yeah. Uh, Jan's given an absolute golden tip there. Diorama Presepi, the place to go. Yeah, we had a good chat about um, about that a couple of uh, a couple of hangouts back, but um, a couple of streams back, but I forgot the name, so I'm going to, I'll go screenshot that. Because, um, yeah, there looks like there's some, some really, really nice uh, components and tufts and things like that coming out of that, that joint, so... Uh, it is it is fun the old uh, uh, basing, but yeah, the the thing that makes it fun is when you've got good shit to put on it. Yes, when you have yeah. to build everything from scratch, I'm I'm just not that guy, you know. Yeah, I know you like you like to incorporate some pre-built stuff into it, right? Yeah, yeah. I've seen. Uh, so uh, I will say that 
there is fatigue that kicks in on basing because you're building everything from scratch and then you're painting it. Um, sometimes by the time that's done, you're like, mm, I'm not really ready to paint a model now. <laughs> you know, I, I think I'd rather just go paint a bus. Like I'm staring at my cabinet right now and there's Mercenary Goblin, Uther, um, and Chicken Quest just sort of staring right at me like, hey man, like you don't have to worry about anything else. You can just come over here and put paint on us. So, it's very easily to get distracted after projects like this but no I, I, I don't know I've been thinking about it a lot lately yeah, I've been thinking about this sort of way of doing things is, is pretty traditional pretty old school and I think it's something I'd really like to learn and have under my belt so I'm a bit you know I'm a bit nerdy when it comes to um, the history of all of this stuff so. you do you do love the history but I, I quite like that about you mate because I think yeah it's rare to find someone who has the, the same sort of knowledge base that I do. Like, I, I get enthusiastic about that shit as well. Yeah. As you know. You know Absolutely. The, the old great, days of Game great Workshop. Chat, great yarns, don't we, about all these different ways of doing things and different painters in the world and different approaches and different eras and different styles from around the world. Yeah. But yeah, thus to now Sebastian's style or, or Veiled Lamp if you're looking for um, looking for him on Instagram or you can probably find his stuff from all different places because he's been around for a long time doing a lot of really great stuff. Um, I've not quite got my, my wraps on it yet. I feel like I'm getting much closer, but yeah. Which I think we can both agree, right, is like a, a strong leaning to sort of traditional French miniature painting. Yep, yeah, very French style, very early, yeah. early uh, 2000s, uh, the year 2000, um, the 2000s, that whole era of painting was um, dominated by that style. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's quite a departure from now, isn't it? Like... Something that's really interesting, like contrast is an extremely in interesting part to today's painting. Um, but back then it was, it was still there, but it was done in a different way. Um, I feel like not just yourself or, or people that come to this stream or whatever, anyone who comes to this stream or watches you paint knows uh, that you paint bold, right? Like yeah. real bold, with real bold contrast as well. And, that, and that's having an impact on, on people around you. It's had an impact on me. It's had an impact on others, on how we paint. And um, when you go back and you look at that old school style of painting, I wouldn't even say old school, just say that, 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 um, that more traditional style of painting from that time, they do it in a different way and I can't quite wrap my head around it. And when I do wrap my head around it, I don't think it looks right <laughs> because I'm so used to us having such high contrast that like my brain's trying to tell me constantly to create more contrast? I, I can't do it. Like I, I've tried. I, I literally yeah. cannot um, figure out a way to convince myself to do it. It just doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah, I've definitely had um, moments like that in the last week. Um, I think, for example, so the bases that I'm doing for the, uh, for the, for the chat, um, I've painted this style of base, this one particular style of base, which follows a, a, a miniature mentor guide from Sebastian from about 12 years ago. Um, I think I've done it four or five times now. Um, and each time I learn something new, learn where I've screwed up. Um, you know, often it's like those like light bulb moments where you're like, oh my God, I'm so dumb. <laughs> But yeah, every time it's a little bit closer, but it sometimes feels a little bit further away, just in the, in the, uh, in the like, idea that, you know, I'm trying to learn this in what, weeks, whereas these legends learnt it in... Years. You know, so yeah, years. Years, years and years, years and years. Yeah. Seb took Seb yeah. years. Yeah. Um, yeah. As you know, mate, I'm, I'm a massive, massive Seb fanboy. Love him to bits. You are. We both are. Yeah. <laughs> um... But yeah, I, I do think that uh, it's interesting to see how his style has evolved. Looking at his um, uh, at his piece that won uh, Crimson uh, Crystal Dragon a few years ago, that yeah. piece uh, was the first time he tried OSL. 
Yes. Um, like so, you know, there's there's a pretty well, I, I wouldn't say easy, but a pretty commonplace sort of technique these days, and he's never done it. You know, mm -hmm. uh, Wiley, that's correct, yeah, mate. I'm just using it to fill in little little lines. I I feel like um I feel like Persephone, his Persephone, is like this blend of <laughs> that traditional style of painting, yeah. the bus painting, which is. Cr is wild, right? Let's and, just start there. And, and him starting Doing that style of painting on a bust is gnarly. And, it's and not to come in to and and start to do new techniques that he's never done before. You know that that's just it's nuts, man. Like the guy's a fucking yeah. fruit loop. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and then to see it in the hand, it just like I wanted it. I wanted to take it home. You, you did. Know? That's right. You did. So see bad. It. Oh. Um, and uh, and if he ever. Um, you know, grows tired of it. It doesn't need it or want it anymore. I, I would put myself up in that in that <laughs> in that ring to own that little piece of history for us for Australian history because I think it's uh, miniature painting history because I think it's I think it's actually a really important piece. If I'm going all the way geeking out, you know. <laughs> Red will call the beast. All right. No, I just want the little dickheads. Where are the little dickheads? There's a question from uh, Wales for you, mate. Well, mate, I've already got the play mat, um, and we use it all the time. But I will get the extras um, for sure. I want to get the human, um, uh, the human ships. Uh, so we've got human we, ships. Yeah. We'll um, we'll bring it up for you actually. Um, when Trent gets a moment, we'll bring up some of these. We maybe because we we can pull up his whole. Um, Catalog through the Arcane Paintworks. So I can send you the link to that straight away. Um, but Persephone, uh, I'm trying to think where a really good picture of Persephone is. I got you back, bro. Let's do it. Uh, here is the model that we are talking about. So, yeah. Seb uh, sculpted it. And then painted it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We neglected to say that he also sculpted this whole thing. He's a dickhead. Uh, uh, yeah. So, just... Contextually, um, mm. we've got a few films. Well, the model we were talking about earlier, uh, Katsura Otoko, is also sculpted by Seb, or Veiled Lamp. Uh, I'll grab the link and you can go check out his Instagram, give him a follow. Um, he's uh, he's one of few who does everything by hand, I believe, right, Deno? That's yep. not a... Him and Lucas Pina yeah. are the two best-known traditional sculptors. Um... Uh, and I'm glad you, you brought up, Lucas, because uh, uh, a few of... Um, our mates who are painting it right now, who have, who have poured over quite a few, had their hands on quite a few um, Lucas Peters and painted quite a few, are like, kind of like, wow, when it comes to the Seb's latest piece, saying they're like, this feels like a Lucas Peter sculpt. Yeah, it's, it's Outside his of best. some stylistic differences like hair and things. Well, I, I haven't been, uh, no disrespect to Seb, when I say this, I haven't been like, wanting to grab those pieces that he's that he's released, you know, it, with any sense of urgency. Yeah. Um, up until this one, this one I was just like, oh shit, I gotta have that. That's awesome, you know. Yeah. Um. Uh. Yeah. Some of his other releases, bit weird, bit monstery, and. Um, yeah, a lot like Dark Selenio and. Yeah, the Harpy one. Yeah, just just didn't yeah. work for me. Not that it was a bad sculpt. I was just like, yeah, I don't really want to paint that though. But yeah, this guy straight up, I was like, oh, I gotta have it. It's fucking mad. So this color palette's like really nice and, and, and here's a great one now that we can talk about with contrast, right? So this in a photo, right, it feels to some degree like it's lacking a bit of contrast, especially if you were to put this against some more tradition of some more um, modern style of painting. Would you agree, mate? Or would, I would you I would absolutely agree. That statement? I would absolutely agree. Uh, it's probably partially bad photography from David and myself, but 
yeah, it certainly is. You, you don't you don't have as much contrast as you would in a Spanish yeah. Spanish piece or a big dinner piece. There's not anywhere near the same yeah. level of contrast. However, when you hold this in the hand, right, it feels like there's exactly the right amount of contrast. Yeah, and that's the most baffling part about learning how to paint this way. <laughs> is like because and and, and here, here's some tips for the chat on on what we're talking about here. There is there is no generally no blacks or whites used in this style of painting. It's all done with color. So deeper shadows at the most will be dark grays, blues, and purples, and going up to the lightest will be um, warm tones uh, or ivories, you know, uh, which is based in white. It's got a bit of white going in, but it's not a pure white. Um, so without those um, those elements, those colors. Or those shades, I should say, were black and white. Like it's really quite hard balancing, uh, or I have found it at least quite hard balancing. I have found it impossible, and I do not do yeah. it. <laughs> but I am. Uh, I'm enjoying the task. I must admit. And yes, this is also the piece that I really want. Um, and off the back of seeing this, I bought this uh, sculpt immediately as mm. well as. So, um, as well as uh, Katsuya Toko, and I almost should have bought uh, Radley and um, Belarus. Uh, Belarus as well, because I really like that too. Um, and after seeing um, the box art for Dark Selenia, I kind of want to paint that too. I really liked Kara's version of that um, uh, chick with the with the things. The jugs. Yeah. Uh, we'll go get her name. We're going to get better at this, mate. We're going to we're going to take ourselves to the top when it comes to pronunciation of Sebastian skulls. <laughs> G'day, Tanaflas. Uh, thanks, mate. Yeah, no, I'm I'm going fine, pal. Uh, really having a good time. So, oh, here's today's right. catch up. Daughter of the firmament. Look at these legends. There's uh, Mark Chi, Kyle Morgan up the back. Yeah, he's done himself a bit of Steve Jared broken his arm. Yeah. What has he done there? Derek, Seb, I uh, don't know who yeah. that dude in the middle is. Uh, there's Wes, that must be Liam Paints at the back. He's a good looking rooster, mm. isn't he? Yeah, he's next to Wes, and I think uh, one of them's Ray, Ray Eats Paints. Oh, is that Ray Eats Paints? That must be Ray Eats Paints there. I don't know who the guy in the middle yeah. is. It might be uh, might be one of one of Seb's mates. Awesome. Uh, Steve, right? One of them's gonna be Steve. Yeah, this, Steve this figure blew my mind. Oh yeah, it's Fletch. Yeah, it is Fletch. Yeah, there you go. yeah. he. I, I. I called him by the wrong name. Um, uh, in my writing of his details down at Crimson Brush, I called him Nicholas Flamel, and it just stuck. <laughs> I, I just connected the two. I'm like Nick, Nicholas Fletcher must be Nicholas Flamel. <laughs> yeah. So he was like, "Oh yeah, can you change my name?" I was like, "Yep, thanks, mate." <laughs> So I'm just to... gonna I'm just gonna slam Kara right here for a second because this photo does oh, no justice to this this paint job. None, not even a little bit. I, I don't know I don't know why so I don't know why she has not taken a good photo of one of her pieces for the longest time. Look, I'm I'm someone who sits in that boat. I've not taken a single really good photo, so. Um, I can't, I can't really give a, a hard time about it, but I can certainly say from having this in the hand and, and Jared there is also agreeing on this one, that it's it's really quite quite wonderful in that. Did a great job. Yes, you know and how I feel about it. it. You know how I feel about it. I was blown away. Yeah, well, this this was like you were you were almost coming around. Were you on this? You were like, I'd give this a paint. Yeah, I want to paint, paint this. Yep, I want to paint yeah. this. So that's like you've gone from, and this is this is probably a really good like sort of cliff note for for what we're talking about is sometimes when you get things in the hand, it's just different, right? And that's yeah. two sculpts that you're immediately like, let's go on veiled lamp um, productions there. He's like, look at that. Nice. Oh. Yeah. There you go. That's that's a great photo. If you go back and show that one, as hey, Eva. If you show that one where it's just sitting with the three, um, th that's a really good representation of what that Persephone looks like in the hand. That's Kara's. That one there. Boom, boom, boom. 
Sebastian, if you're listening, I want to know your plinth guy. What is it? <laughs> that's actually, I've already that's set, a good set point. Jim to task on that. <laughs> that's a good point, actually. I wouldn't mind knowing who that is. Not that I have any problems with my current supplier, Jim, the great man no, himself. Jim's, Jim's fantastic. But you know what? Maybe we could we could put Jim onto this. Hopefully, I've got an order going to Jim for my um, for my birthday. I'm out of plinths, which means I'm out of potential future bases, and we can't live that way. Nick Jaguar is here. Welcome, mate. What's the one? Do I even invite this from the Jags himself? What's the one thing you've come to say, Jagman? Oh, Bucks, did you hear about that kidnapping? No. Yeah, he woke up. If I could abruptly leave this stream, <laughs> impact, I would. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's just one for Randall there. Uh, oh, he's, he's going deep on the Esh. Don't listen to the guy, he's, he's fucking it's Nicaraguan. You can't trust the word he says. <laughs> There's only, uh, there's only two sides of people in this world I hate, mate. Yeah. Racists and Nicaraguans. Yeah. Where does that leave our friend, <laughs> Mr. Jags? <laughs> <laughs> nah, I love him to bits. He's a funny guy. Very funny guy. Um, all right. Well. Hey, should we go and have a look at... Should we go and have a look at that gallery? Which gallery? Crimson Brush, uh, Crystal Dragon. I'll send you. I'll send you. Oh, it's just a Seb's gallery from back in the day, so that um, people can get an idea about what we're talking about as well. You know, we like to we like to look at miniature painting here as much as do miniature painting. So uh, yeah, send me the link. I'll like send this. you the link. This is the Friend? this is the previous year. Uh, there you go. It's in boys chat. Just so. Yeah. And I was literally just there, you peanut. What do you think I was looking at? You were looking at thing. You were just looking at. Uh, we only looked at what's it called? No, I was looking at the whole, the whole thing. You are you are an absolute knob in on occasion. I tell you what. Look at this. This is this is what I was on, mate. You just gave me a link to the same thing. Oh, oh apologies, apologies. <laughs> Sorry, I clicked the wrong link. Give me a sec. I thought I copy paste the right thing. Here we go. What I actually do is copy paste into my URL, like an absolute spud. There you go. Apologies. Okay, let's go. Ah, yes. What a glorious piece that is. That yeah. that piece uh, was. I, oh, I should I should sign up for Supercoach. Starting soon, isn't it? Get amongst it. That PC wrote an article on um, Cool uh, Mini. Yeah, Cool Mini. And it was awesome. He was so influential back in the day, wasn't he? He really was. For us, I mean, the most influential, right, in Australia. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah, this is one of my mates. I've known him for a long time now, actually. Like, cause I, back in the day, you know, I went down to the games days and stuff, and I sort of got to know him through through Lamprecht, through Glenn, because yeah. Glenn, Glenn and him had this you know friendly competition going on, and um, and they ended up yeah becoming quite close, and um, and so I sort of got to know him through Glenn, and then. Yeah, it's been it's been cool in the last few years in particular, you know, we've we've been doing the judging together and been involved in the Australian scene a bit together. It's it's pretty cool. Um but yeah, that that piece is um ridiculous. Uh and they're it's great to have him back, right? Cuz he oh, yeah. you know, go off and you do things and you know, spend some time with him at um at Crimson Brush and he was just so enthusiastic and excited to be Back amongst it, you know. Yeah, it was awesome. I love this piece. I, I love everyone equally. Um, 
this is a this is a magnificent uh, version of. Fuck, how's this fucking arm going? Uh, it's a magnificent version of Step Style, like mm -hmm. the basing, everything. It's just the balance. Yeah. The ha harmony, you know. Yep. Uh, love it. And you'll notice back then, um, a large chunk of this is true metal. Yep. He didn't do non-metallic metals much back in the day. Love, love this. You like this one, do you? Yeah. Particularly like the green to red contrast that there is in there. Pink being a form of red. Works mm -hmm. really well. Uh, love the bright pink focal point. Love the blood, the contrast of glossy and smooth. Um, or glossy and matte. You know, the, the matte rust versus alongside the, the gloss effects. Works the balance, for me. Of, yeah, the balance of oxide. And yep. then the oil slick yep. leaking out. Yeah. Good, good piece. We've got hey, some absolute killers coming up. A so. maestro right there, one of the best. Oh, this is going to be one of the best individual miniatures ever. I'm going to say it, ever. Oh, I just found out my niece is up to book four in Harry Potter. I can't wait to talk to her about it. She's just turned 10. Um, that base, yep. like back then, was mm -hmm. unheard of. And they mm -hmm. actually changed the rules around um, basing for the for the Golden Demons because the basing just became more and more elaborate. And Seb this one, this one wasn't Golden Demon. This no, one was no, no. this one was Crystal Dra Crystal Cri Brush. Yeah, Crystal Brush. But no, but yeah. but because he did a couple of other pieces um, that yeah, were yeah. Games Workshop, and and yeah. they basically he and and Carpo and a couple of other guys just kept escalating the fucking scale. And, mm -hmm. um, and they ended up getting to a point where they were like, yeah, we can't, you can't have bases that are like twice the size of the fucking figure. Yeah. Uh, wow, that's awesome. Look at that. Mm-hmm. Uh, great water effects too. That's tricky to do. That's tricky to do 15 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking very right, tricky to like, do. Yeah. Yeah, you could do that now without too much difficulty because of the, the myriad of products you've got available. But back in the day, whew, that's impressive. Uh, Again, wonderful harmony. Yeah, right? just so balanced. He's a, he's a teal fan though, isn't he? Oh, uh, look, I've, I I have accepted right. Like if before I even got on this journey, if you look at what I paint, right, teal is in everything I do almost. So I feel like maybe this is where the the pull or the draw started. Was like using this color. I mean, he hasn't used it at all here. He's shown some restraint. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's that's a that's a piece that you probably wouldn't immediately pick as Seb's actually. No, I mean the only calling card for him there is probably the some, to some degree the base, but the not metal metallic. Oh, sorry, the true metal metallic. Yeah, the metals have got his yeah. vibe, mate. These are these would be fifteen to twenty years old, Randall. Yeah. Um, probably more actually. Like this one, this one would have been done for a games day in the late nineties. Two thousand and five. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. But he was, he Apologies was if games. I'm well actualing you at any point. <laughs> no, 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 please. I am I am very keen to have that because I'd like to be precise. But I know that Seb's heyday was uh, was like late 1990s to early 2000s. Yeah, to up to about 2007, I yeah. think. Uh, and then, and then, no, in fairness, he probably went further because he... I think he might have started painting late 90s, but he, he started entering in the early 2000s, all the way up to the 10s, right? Because he went up to OzCon, like he was still yep. entering, and Crystal Dragons, sorry, Crystal Brushes as well, so. And he went overseas and, um, uh, and entered Golden Demons and stuff overseas, which was, which was or again, another thing that was sort of like, at the time, was a crazy thing. Yeah. Um, you know, like. I, th I think Kyle Morgan might have also traveled with him on those adventures. Very possible. Kyle's yeah. a great dude, he, he came to, um, came to Crimson uh, Crystal Dragon Crimson Brush uh, a number of times before um, a couple of years ago he, he didn't make it down last year obviously because of the pandemic and then this year I don't think he'd been painting that much but yeah he's, he's an awesome dude so I like that one the Banshee the oldest the oldest piece yeah this was great the story behind this one's awesome as well so I believe that he 
he threw this, and you can find a lot of these like these stories and information just on his cool mini on our profile. Um, but I believe that he he kind of last minute, sort of roughly last minute, threw this together as he thought he wasn't going to make it in time. He would have been overseas competing, so he threw this together. So historically for Australia, we had Golden Demon all the way up until 2005, 2006, I want to say, maybe 2005. And then we lost it um, due to us not being able to do a game stay anymore. And then we brought it back for 2000, I want to say 2011 and 12. No, I think, it was, I think it was 2011. Yeah, no, I, th- I think it was 2009 almost. Um, yeah. That... That, that they did it. They did it at a games workshop store for Golden Demon. They did. Was it? Sydney? Ah, sorry. I apologise. Yeah, we did the store ones, but this one, this one was for when we brought back the Sydney one for two years. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, and this this one, he was he was on an overseas trip, I believe, and he yep. was saying that he wasn't sure he was going to be able to enter it, but had enough time in the end, so he did it all last minute and he sculpted the face um, as well, because you know that's just what you do. Uh, didn't he? Didn't he uh, win something with that? He, he did. He did. Yeah. He yeah did. Of course he did. That a wanker. <laughs> um, yeah, it was. Hey, it was. It was a very, very early on in the piece, Cooge, and I think people were still learning, like the, uh, you know, the contrast of, of patterned and uh, you know smooth was was like a very novel concept back then. So you just didn't see yeah. like this level of detail. Yeah. It's crazy. So it's just smooth only back then, right? Yeah, like, yeah This yeah. is when when smooth ruled the roost. Yep, yeah, you know? absolutely. Like, everything was smooth. See, look at that leather. I look at that leather and I yeah. go, yeah, it needs more work, Seb. Yeah, keep tripping away, yeah. son. You'll, be, you'll get there one day. A bit more focal yeah. points, you know? But back in the day, that was just vintage. Yeah. And again, oh. you know, there's some first examples of crafting his own stones and rocks. And this is where I'm basing all of my learnings on Look at that guy. Um, how to do this. I love this model, right? That's like, so good. It's awesome. That's so good. I love that. Uh, the, the thing that I love most about that is just look how fucking punching you in the dick hole the blue is, hey? Yeah. It just, it just hums. So... Here's a really a really fun fact, right? So, like, contrast has pushed the boundaries in our modern version of painting. I think what Sebastian was doing and what he was challenging for his time was colour, right? They just didn't use that much colour, like, around this time. Mm. And he was putting colour into everything, right? Like, look at the stones, for example. Yeah, <laughs> Like, I like, I want to have blue and maroon stones or blue and, you know, warm red stones. So I'm going to. Like, is it real? Probably not. So it's interesting how much, like, probably what you would say, like, the, the Spanish style now has been influenced by, to some extent, you know, what Seb and what the French style was back then because yeah. coloured rocks, huge, hugely influential now. I mean, yeah, oh, and that white, geez, that's good. That's, that's unreal. I'm impressed by that, Seb. No one gets a yeah. tick of approval. Uh, this piece isn't as impressive these days. You look back at it and you go, "Wow, this article no. is crazy." But but it's still got it's still got a charm, you know. Yeah. Uh, oh, now we're getting old. Look at that. Yeah, that, that's probably really old. Oh, that's not what I've even seen. Oh, oh, Rackham. Yeah. Yeah, he did that painting. He did that painting um, tutorial. Yeah, Glaze yeah. City, mate. Glaze City, crazy stuff. That's cool. Uh, that's yeah, this is all, all all glazing, like everything. Alan Carrasco, is. right there. Yeah. I think one of my absolute favourites will come up soon, and obviously one that's inspired a large amount of what I'm doing now. Yeah, it's um, good, good to see him diversify and do some... So 40K there, a Sentinel, again, scratch. introducing, so weathering was brand new at this time, right? Yeah. Like, for, yeah. for miniature painting, not for, for scale models. I didn't know well, you know what didn't exist back then for us, really, was the old airbrush. No, and it was frowned upon, even if yeah. someone were, would, have, would have used it back then, they would have been told they're cheating, right? Yeah. Oh, this little walk dude. Yeah, really nice. It is, and it... You know, it's quite challenging to balance. Oh, here it these is. Colors. This is the one you're waiting for, isn't it? You know it. <laughs> yeah. I, I love this, and obviously, this is something that I've been doing. Indeed, Cooge. Uh, yep. So, Cooge, pigments are used. So, this particular miniature that is done here, this Rackham Scroll, 
um, the scroll of protector. Um, this is what he did for the miniature mentor um, program. I guess we'll call it a program, you know, um, if you can find a better word for it. Uh, which he does takes you step by step through how he created the base and how he created did painted the miniature. Um, and when he takes pigments out for the first time, uh, back then it, a cool way of doing it was to create them yourself by getting soft pastels yep. and shaving them down. Um, so I'm just going to hold up for you now so where this journey has led me. So has been, this is full of soft pastels. <laughs> um, I have a whole bag of soft pastels <laughs> here. Um, I am just the soft pastel king right now. <laughs> and the, the great thing about it is you can choose a lot of your own colors, right? So if you want to have soft pastels and pinks and teals and all this sort of stuff, you can. Um, but I digress. <laughs> the first time he pulls out, and you know this, the first time he pulls this out, this method out, our, our dear mate, Miniature Mentor, is beside himself. He's like, he is oh my like, god! Wow! Oh my what god. is this? <laughs> it's classic. But yeah, that that yeah. is that is pigment heavy. I don't recall him doing a lot of um, pigments on much of the other stuff that he did. But yeah. it certainly certainly was a part of those bases. It, he, here's my criticism of Seb, right? And, and, and this is yeah. this is a, a broad criticism, right? But you would see Seb's work put on the on the table, and you go, "That's Seb." Because yeah. you look at those rocks, and then you go back and look at, um, yeah. you know, these these rocks, and you're like, yep, same rocks, you know, yeah. same same style. And he he really uh, he really had a defined style back then. Every now and then he'd do something like this, which you didn't know was his, but mostly you'd be like, oh, yeah, that's Sebs. Yeah, yeah, that's now, Sebs. I will say this because I've been learning how to sculpt these rocks an awful lot. It's really fun to do. Right? It is fun. It's just super fun to do, and that's that's maybe how it's easy to get caught up. Oh, that's it. some good snow. I wonder if that's bicarb. He went out, yeah. so for a long time. He didn't sell anything. He uh, he kept all his models, and then yeah. I think he. I hey, think can he, you can you go back just a couple? Which one? The snow base. Or? Nah, back back past the snow base. Uh, I think it's too bad. This one here. If anyone in the fucking chat, right, gets or has this model, <laughs> please, please get in contact with me. Let us talk business. This is an Enigma model, and I need it. I think this is one of the coolest models I've ever seen. It's pretty good. It's 54 millimeter too, mate. Enigma, Enigma did a couple of models that I was really keen on, and I, I missed out. There's that that one very back early on in the in the thing was an Enigma model, I'll come back and show you later rather than clicking through, but um, some Rackham, that's yeah, a, a cool model, I've never seen that one before, that's that's it up there, I love it. Mm. I think that's sort of out of wheelhouse, what yeah. do you think? Uh, yeah, different colour palette to what he'd normally use, yep. It's still got, it's still got, his, it's still got his vibes, this is yeah. him all over, you know. He's also like just the super humblest dude as well. So. Yeah, this this one this one's the one I wanted. I think that's actually yeah. conversion, right? The hand it didn't normally hold that. Um, he did halberd. something to it. I yeah, remember, I, I, yeah, I don't think uh, he held a halberd. I think he had um, like a sword or something else, an axe down. But yeah, that's that's the Enigma figure that I tried to find for a while. Couldn't find it. Yeah, lovely stuff so, from Seb. Lovely stuff. Yeah, in order of appearance, I'd want to own at least. Um, so at least the first two, the Brom, Scroll, yeah. All of them. So all of them. Crystal Brush Run, just, mate, if you've got any of these, let's talk. <laughs> oh, yeah, and, and Kujo, he absolutely, 100% seems confused all of the time. <laughs> he just doesn't know what's going on, eh? No. no. no we, look, on this, on the, on this stream, we tend to take the mic a bit, and we absolutely take the mic I'll smash yeah, the that I'll smash at that every guy. opportunity we can. He's got no fucking idea, honestly. No. I'm just I've hammered him fucking over and over again. Yeah. Um, cool. All right. Well, I'm ready to go on on these. I think I'll do some uh, some PVA before my next stream, but I'm ready to go on most of these. So I might start with these little four. 
Save the big yeah. ones for later on. Um, I've got the wolf chick and the wolf. And I've got these little dickheads and the big guy. Should be good fun. So, Katsuro Atoko, we're going to go for a rising sun theme. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mate, so Seb, Seb's one of the kindest and generous, gentlest people I've ever met, right? And he, is. he basically said to me, man, that guy's a fuckwit, right? In, in as nicely in, Seb's, in Seb's way, which is because he's like doesn't sound anything like that. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't sound like me. But basically, the guy, the guy's like got Seb on there. He's flown him all the way over there. He's done this video with him, right? And Seb's like, I use a white undercoat. It's just just what I do. If you want to paint like me, you need to use a white undercoat. And the guy, the guy's basically uh, at the start of Seb's video. He's just put a fucking screen up that says, Sebastian uses a white undercoat, but we strongly recommend a black undercoat. For for you know, it's much easier. Cheers. And that's it. And so Seb's yeah. whole video is prefaced by this guy going, don't, don't listen to the professional fucking Golden Demon Slayer sword winning phenom Sebastian yeah. Archer. Trust me, yeah. guys. Use the black army code. And he cuts, he cuts him off a lot like, oh. where it's like, you know, this is, this is boring. And it's like, yeah, all right. I, I agree, mate, that maybe watching someone glaze is boring, right? But... This is a part of, of what he does, you know what I mean? And this is an important part of what he's trying to show you. So you probably don't need to, like, you know, wrap him up quickly. Just let him do what he does, you know? It was, it was I, I, I got, like, visibly angry when I was yeah. watching. And I was like, man, this guy's one of the fucking best in the world. You don't get to say, <laughs> no, nah, just ignore what he's doing. You don't get to say that, mate. Just fuck up. <laughs> but just do it, tornadoes. Wait a minute. Don't do tornadoes. There's another one. Snipple There's blend. another one. Wait a minute. Don't stipple blend when you could just paint, what is it? <laughs> Hardcore value. Yeah. So there, there's a, a Javier Gonzalez did a, did a thing for him, RC Studio. And um, he does a lot of airbrushing. He paints this musician from um, Nocturna, or yeah. fiddle, fiddler, whatever, violin player. And um, he, he, he talks a lot about his airbrush maintenance and, you know, you see him mixing up airbrush stuff. It's really, really good. Like I was, I was, like fully into it and um and then he gets to this point where he's he's done his undercoat with a primer and he and he and he runs his finger over and he's like oh it just feels a bit you know a bit bit rough and because he's obviously going to be using super soft transitions from his airbrush he grabs yeah. a bit of paper towel and he just like like brushes it along the model and he's just real gentle right but he's just like rubbing a little bit of the extra you know like yeah, the, yeah. The, the the texture off he's, he's just smoothing it out and like you can, you can, you can see that Javier's done it a million times already. He knows exactly what he's doing. And the guy, the guy watching it, he's like, "So, um, is that even doing anything? Like, it doesn't look like it's doing anything, mate. Do you need to do that?" And Javier's like, "Yeah, feel it, mate. You can fucking feel it." And I reckon Javier's just like, I'm done with this fuck with now. And he just starts Rodrigo. speaking, starts Rodrigo speaking Rodrigo more Spanish. Well. There's times that he's just like, yeah. Like Cooja's uh, uh, example in there as well. I've seen that one too. Yeah. <laughs> with the, did you read that? With the yep. brush sizes? Just like. Yeah. But, so to preface this for the chat, we're not just slaying this guy totally and utterly. Hey, Wampa, I like, am. Hey, you know. I am slaying um, this guy totally and utterly because I think he's a peanut and he ruins yeah, the fucking yeah. videos for me sometimes. He 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 um he is not a miniature painter and he doesn't come from a miniature painting background, so we have to give him some slight concessions. I give him no concessions. He's a twat. <laughs> Dedo just says no. He's a fuck with. Get him out. Fuck yeah now, man. Get him gone. What an absolute yeah. bell end he is. <laughs> Fucking send him. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I've not seen this one fully fully done. Oh, this chick? Oh, okay. I was eating and bopping about before. Did you miss some spots on the wing, mate? Just curious. Uh, you mean over here? <laughs> just fucking bitch. Yeah, just missed, missed a few. How many did I get on the back? Oh, fucking none. Get that up here. You literally, this is the angle you see her from in the fucking diorama. She's from here. So it's like, there you go. Yeah, That'll do. That's what you get. That'll that's do. You get. You'll be fine. <laughs> oh, fuck it. If he invited me in the miniature mentor, oh my God. Oh my God. Could you imagine? Let, let, let me do the commentary, please. <laughs> right? Like, just say, part of the deal is just say, look, I'll do it for you, mate. And I'll do my style. But I'm bringing my own commentator. It's a part of the mastery. Like, it's just, you know, 
<laughs> if he invited me to be on, I'd be like, here's the deal, bro. I'll come on. But anytime you say something stupid, I'm going to tell everyone how fucking That's stupid true. you are. All right? Yeah. That's it. You either accept my terms or fuck like off. you got to put like a stupid hat on him every time, you know what I mean? Or a t-shirt. Like, send him to the corner for five minutes. Oh, you just... see the camera visually pick up and move to the corner. <laughs> and there's me just sitting at the table painting. I was like, you're not finished yet. Yeah. Nah, yeah. I, I so, would have, uh, have a think about what you've done. <laughs> I'd fucking hammer him, eh? Yeah. Uh, I don't think you'd pass along in your presence, mate. There you go. Um, I, I think she came out alright, eh? Yeah, absolutely, Captain. Absolutely. Dunce cap for Miniature Mentor. Uh, but also, thanks for the great resource, mate. <laughs> but it is a great resource. I, I would yeah. wholeheartedly recommend buying all of yeah. the uh, buying all the Miniature Mentor videos. Like, it costs you... Yeah, they will help you. Um, if you want them to, they will help you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's you just got to be willing to get some shit. Yeah. Just have some moments where you're scratching your head. How's my bronze looking, eh? Fucking hell. Bronze is looking nice. She's looking nice. She's well balanced, mate. Yeah. You could tell she was my favourite model and I was just like, oh yeah. yeah. I think Ben will really like this model. And I'll give you three reasons why, but you'll only need one. Brown! <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Yeah, made some made some good inroads in my nominate medal, I think, on uh, on her. Yeah, twenty twenty two is coming up a mill for you and your nominate metallic right now. Yeah, I like it. She does indeed have a Valkyrie vibe, my friend, because she actually is a Valkyrie. She <laughs> is indeed a Valkyrie, and I love her. Captain, that's going to get you very quickly sent to the dancers corner. <laughs> <laughs> In the minute, that was a miniature mentor quote right there, yeah. right? <laughs> Just a little bit of this fucking black stuff that I left on there. No, I didn't take that. Where the fuck was it? I was just looking at it. There I, it is. I actually need to get some of this stuff. I still haven't. Oh, it is awesome. No, you're a legend, mate. It is, it is indeed a Valkyrie, so... She's, um... Yeah, much, much bigger scale than the old Warhammer 54 mil. I'm going to give her a matte varnish, and that's, uh, yeah. Uh, she's, a, she's a Valkyrie from, um, Hyperborea. Uh, Chimera and, um, Thingo, right? Uh, yep. There it is. We went with the blue-green feathers, Wampa, because we needed her to tie in with the environment and the cool, cold palette of the, the good guys. Depending on your perspective, of course. Oh, you know what? Cause I didn't even think about watching the Banshee ones. Banshee probably shreds him. <laughs> he probably gives him no nowhere at all if he says something silly. It's young Banshee. Ah, oh, is it? It's okay. before fuck smoothness. Yeah. So he'd just be simmering on the inside there. Are we getting ready to wrap up, mate, or are we? Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm varnishing this, and then we might, uh, we might raid on. Shall we? Shall we? You know, we don't do it often, but I think we should go raid our boy CHK. Tonight. Oh, let's. Well, he's raided in the last couple of times, doesn't he? All right, let's let's pay him back for the glory that yeah. he is. I do love me some CHK, as you well know. Thanks, like Jared. You're a champion. Hi, no, no, Jared. Uh, yes. Like wings for the Valkyrie will soar on into CHK's uh, Scarabos. Stream. I stream on a Monday night and a Wednesday night at this time. So this is my Monday night stream, and I do it again on a Wednesday night around the same time. And then I'll also stream on a Sunday morning, my time, which is usually uh, afternoon slash early evening for Americans and early morning for. Europeans, so um, let's go see if CHK is out and about. Where are you in the world, Scarabost? In the world, Scarabost. Oh, bit of the oh. echoing. Sydney. Oh, easy. So uh, 7.30, 7.30 to sort of 10.30 uh, our time, Sydney, Melbourne time, 6.30 to 9.30ish for uh, Queensland time. Yeah, seven, seven, seven thirty to about ten o'clock for me. Nine o'clock for my time. Um, I think CHK is literally finishing up. 
Oh, should, is he? Yeah, should we go anyway? You know what? We should We should do... That would be the easy way out. We've got to go see if we can find a, a grinder. Yeah, let's go see if we can find some little nuffy who's rubbish at miniature painting that we can that we can throw a bit of big deno on him. Yeah. Uh, Alright, let's have a look. That's fucking that's CHK in the background just going. Just going ham. Just going so ham's the league fucking right now. Is. What's he painting right now? Uh, I don't know actually. He's doing something cool. Um, Alright, what do we got? Miniature or de descent? That might be Spanish. 1080 only, you know the rule? Yeah, it's 720 and it's Spanish. That's tough. No, it's a no. It's a no, I'm sorry. It's a better, oh, it's, it's, a, it's a better stream. No, no, sculpt, uh, painting. Oh, okay, Italian. Okay. Thanks, Gary Boss. It's a better p stream that's 720p than some of the other rubbish ones I've seen, eh? It is, but it's not 1080. Yeah, 1080 is rules. the rules. Uh, spec Op Spud, what do we got going on here? Mate, son, sort out your exposure, son. Come on, mate. That's, that's atrocious. And he's also putting them together back to front. Nah. <laughs> having, having, a, having a laugh, that guy. What's this guy? Twit miniatures. I do like a twit. Ooh, I think we're on here. And it's an Aussie. Well, that always goes to all. What's the, yeah. We're doing some oil washing. Looks like oil washes. I'm doing some oil washing on some towel. I'm in. I'm in for twit miniatures, friends. Love a friendly twit. I'm a bit of a tweeter myself. Giddy up. Let's go. Okay, let's go. So yeah, friends, back on uh, back on Wednesday night. Don't know if Bucks will be with me if he's about. We'll see if he wants to. Join. Oh, I'll be about. I'm usually about for Monday and Wednesdays, as long as you want me. I always enjoy streaming, and I think we will be probably starting some of these wire models. So yeah, and then tune in absolutely for Sunday, Monday, which will be birthday streams. Don't birthday streams. Woo! Rain. See you, friends. Good one, mate.